Something very interesting happened just three weeks ago. Uh, Bank of England governor proposed interesting change. He proposed that US dollar as a reserve currency, global reserve currency, should be replaced by some digital currency, similar to what Facebook Libra is, which is pretty interesting news. Why I am saying that? What's so interesting about that? Uh, the money, as we know right now, and our financial system will definitely change. It's an inevitable thing. Under pressure of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies or for other reasons, basically, it doesn't matter why, but it, it's going to be uh, different. Uh, Bitcoin can help us to understand what interesting features of money is because nobody is thinking about the virtual uh, properties of money very often. So uh, Bitcoin can be uh, useful in that, in that thing. But let's start with the very beginning of money. Gold was and is the most successful uh, money ever used. It was used for thousands of years until 1971, I think it was. Uh, it has all the great properties of money. And one particular thing is important for us today. You can use it as cash. For example, you can have a nice horse. I have coins. We can swap it, can make the trade right now, right here, uh, without anybody uh, interrupting us. We don't have to ask anybody for permission. It's a critical thing. But gold has one flaw today. Uh, it cannot be used online. We cannot pay on Amazon with physical gold. Uh, and if we try to, we would like to have digital money because everything is digital today. And if we try to do it directly, it fails miserably because we can copy things. Whenever something is digital, we can copy it any number of times, so it's not useful for money because inflation will be uh, obviously a problem. So we have to have some kind of a system for keeping what's correct state of the system, like who owns uh, what. So these systems can be implemented in a lot of different ways. Uh, we are, will be interested in uh, accounts, balances, transactions, and stuff like that, like all the interesting data. And uh, the second aspect of systems uh, for keeping money is how things can change, who can do it when we can do it, who has the permission, and things like, uh, like that. Obviously, the most common systems, and we use them, uh, are centralized systems. Look, for example, a bank. Everybody knows that. Uh, it's a pretty efficient thing. Millions of users. It's fast. It's, but it's centralized. And the critical point is you have to trust the middleman, the bank. Uh, it's a critical concept, because now we cannot trade the horse for coins without asking for permission. The bank needs to allow us uh, to make the transaction. And it's not necessarily a problem here for everyday transactions, but it's ask your friends from South America if they trust their banks or their financial systems centralized. So there's a lot of problems with uh, centralized systems like privacy, deep privacy issues, or changing rules and uh, inflation, a lot of things. So what we would like to have is a decentralized system, removing the problem, the center piece, and replacing it by a mesh or a network of independent nodes, where every single node can understand the system, can see the rules, can validate that everything is correct, nobody is creating uh, money from thin air, or stuff like that. But when, when we move to a decentralized system, we introduce a new problem. It's difficult to keep everybody in sync, everybody on the same, same spot. Let's look at an example. Uh, let's imagine that all the nodes in our decentralized system understand that uh, Carol has some money. She wants to uh, send them to her friend, but some issue with internet happens, and only half of the nodes in the network can see this transaction. It, it can happen. It's a pretty normal thing. But for this example, let's say she sends another transaction to a different friend. 
but other half of the nodes can see the transaction. Now, we can see that there is a problem, but every single node in the network doesn't see the, the conflict. So what we can do with that? This is a pretty tough computer science problem, and it was not, not solved for a lot, lot, lot of years until Bitcoin has happened. Bitcoin is the first system ever which we can use for peer-to-peer -peer transactions fully digitally without asking any third party for permission. This is a completely new thing. So let's look a bit how it works. Uh, Bitcoin uses blockchain data structure. Uh, it's a pretty known word, but let's look at what, uh, what's, what it is. You can imagine it as an accounting book. The blockchain is the book. And every nice, well-behaving accounting book, it has some pages uh, numbered from 1 to n. Uh, the same is with blockchain. Blockchain has blocks, pages, uh, numbered from 1 to n. And the pages contain uh, transactions, as the book contains records as a rows. Uh, one critical thing is that all the data are immutable. You cannot change what happened. So it, it, it's one written. Once it's written, it's written. So you can only add new blocks uh, so that you change the system by adding transactions. Now, what happens if we want to interact? There are some, uh, some transactions going on, and we would like to put them into blockchain. Uh, this process is called mining. We have heard something about it. It should be named block building, but for some reasons, we are calling it mining. So mining takes the transactions and put them into a block. Easy process. But it, it's not so easy. If it's so easy, everybody would create its own blocks, its own blocks, and uh, the blockchain would be spammed with a lot of garbage. So we have to have some mechanism how to choose what block is credible, what should be placed into blockchain. And if we are in a centralized system, it would be pretty easy. We would ask the authority what block uh, should go there, and it would be super simple. But we don't want such authority, because we want a fully decentralized system. So we cannot use a uh, trusted entity. There is a mechanism called proof of work, which solves this for Bitcoin. Uh, as the name suggests, it is a proof that somebody irreversibly spent some energy building the block. It cannot be undone. The energy has to be spent for providing the proof. And now we can, we can, we can double check easily that the work has been done. It's physics-based. No particular party is involved. It's real hard proof. Now we can use it as uh, the credibility measurement for the block. So it, if the block is good enough in this sense, it can be put into blockchain. Uh, during the process, uh, new Bitcoins are created because every new block uh, in Bitcoin system introduces new coins, and they are used as a reward for miners, the people or machines who build uh, the proof of work, who do the, the energy transformation. So it's a fair game. It's a reward for very, very well spent uh, energy. Now, let's get back to the problematic case. The half world could see something, another half could see other thing. Other thing. Uh, in a blockchain world, it can, see, it can be seen like that. There are two candidates, two blocks, which would like to get into blockchain, but we need to choose only one. Now we have a mechanism how to measure credibility of blocks. So we can solve it. And the case can be even more complicated than this. We can have more blocks waiting. There can be any number of branches. But the mechanism is very, very uh, deterministic. You can always choose what branch has the biggest credibility or what is the most energetic uh, chain or what chain has the greatest proof of work? It's all, all uh, the same. So we know now how to 
how to proceed with uh, building the chain. So we, in other terms, people are some, sometimes baffled by what mining is. It's a difficult concept. But you can, from now on, you can understand mining as a decentralized way how to reach globally a consensus about some data without trusting anybody. It can be done just by looking at the physical proof of uh, the energy spent. And this is a critical thing what Bitcoin introduced. Uh, and it gave Bitcoin very interesting properties. Basically, no other system until that point could have such features. Uh, I would strongly suggest you to go and read something about Bitcoin, because we don't have a lot of time for discussing all the interesting features, what can be uh, created by, by this distributed thing. But it, it's going to be well spent time if you read something about Bitcoin, not necessarily focusing on, on the price, which is nice, but just the features, because it, it can give you, it can enlighten you. There are alternative blockchains other than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin was the first. We can study them just by looking at Bitcoin and what we can change on this mechanism to reach a different blockchain. Because it's all, all the blockchains are working on very similar uh, principle, but they change a bit and we can reach to a completely different state. You could probably hear the uh, term private blockchain. Bitcoin is public blockchain. Uh, or permission, federated, corporate, you name it. There is a lot of them. But they have something in common. All replace the mining, the distributed consensus, and replace it by signing, by introducing authority, giving a signature what block is the proper block to be put into blockchain. It can be very useful. You can do crazy things with it. The, the whole data structure is still present, but you remove the, you, you add a trusted party, so you completely change the, the trust model. Different, different thing, what can be done with uh, blockchains by changing things, it's fancy term tokenization. Basically, you can take any physical ob object or an electronic stuff and put it to the blockchain by uh, keeping a correspondence between the data in a blockchain and the physical object. It has been done with gold, with fiat currencies, with real estate. You can choose whatever you want. Again, it works. The blockchain can be public, can be private, a lot of possibilities. But again, we have to, have to introduce uh, a trusted party. Because somebody needs to keep the connection between what's on the blockchain and what is in a physical reality. For example, if you buy gold on blockchain, there needs to be some vault, probably in bank, and some trusted party have to give you the gold if you bought uh, the gold on blockchain. So again, the, the blockchain part can work, but we have introduced a trusted party, different trust model. One interesting example of tokenized uh, asset is what Facebook proposed, uh, Facebook's Libra. You probably heard about that. It was in news uh, lately, like one month ago, two months ago. Uh, it is just a US dollars and euros and some other uh, currencies like that tokenized to a blockchain and used as a different currency, fully digital internet money, but backed by uh, existence of, of dollar and euro. But the trust model is the critical thing here. You have to ask Facebook to use it, basically. There is a lot of candidates for future money. We are not sure how our financial systems will, uh, will look like, but we can study the, the properties and uh, we have uh, went over gold. Gold is still proposed uh, as a money of future. There are people seriously considering moving back to gold standard because it 
uh, would solve problem with inflation and stuff like that. Uh, fiat tokenization is a, is a problem or a possibility. Obviously, Bitcoin is a possibility. So analyzing these things is not an easy task, obviously. We don't have time for it today, but in my opinion, still the best chance we have for future money is Bitcoin. It has a lot of technical problems, like scalability is an issue. We are not ready to onboard uh, the whole planet yet. But all problems Bitcoin have are related to technical stuff. We can work on technical problems. We can spend some work and make Bitcoin better in this sense. But what Bitcoin does correctly is the basic principles, the, the fact that we can have a deal with each other without asking some governor or other trusted party or other intermediate to do so. So again, go to read something about Bitcoin uh, and be amazed. And if you have any question related to this topic or you have some ideas, we have a booth here under the brains. Uh, and come to us and let's talk. Thank you. <laughs>